Welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we do have a doctor in the house from time to time, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing we say on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check in with a trusted medical professional about your own personal medical concerns. Hello and welcome to Keto Life Support. This is Kim Howerton with episode 191. And it's time for our monthly-ish update on Kim's fat loss phase. As I am recording this, it is in that weird period between Thanksgiving and Christmas in the United States where everybody seems to be thinking about food and nobody seems to want to do any work, or that might just be me. But the fat loss phase is actually going really well. I'm not feeling super deprived. I'm feeling pretty focused. We're only a month in, people. But um, my results, okay, what has happened in terms of where I am on my fat loss? I've lost about five pounds. Now, that is at a faster rate than I've said I was going to go at for the fat loss phase I'm in. But the first month, you're always going to see or you should always see a more accelerated rate, especially the first week or two because of increased water weight. So anytime you go into a fairly significant deficit, you're going to see just a drop down in weight. And when you come out of your deficit and go to maintenance, you're going to actually see a couple pounds bump back up usually. So it's sort of like the bookends, right? When you first start, there's a little bump bump down. My hands were demonstrating that, but it's a podcast cam. It's podcast. So down, down, like it's like going down a little step, that first one. And then at the end you go up a step, right? If when you're like, okay, I'm done with my fat loss phase, I'm going to go back to maintenance. So that just, it's just a balancing out. So the first two pounds, and the last two pounds, they switch places. So a little bit of loss at the beginning, not really fat loss, a little bit of gain at the end, not really fat gain. It's just water fluctuation, but I'll take it, right? So I have lost obviously some body fat in this time period. I've decided I'm not going like full like DEXA metric everything. I'm using, you know, how I feel and what size clothes I'm wearing and my measurements and the scale to some degree, although I know that if I step up my workouts as this period goes, I am working out, but if I step them up much, there might be some fluctuation because of that as well. But at this point, I'm really happy with my progress. I'm happy with the choices I've been making. I'm watching myself because I am getting a little bit obsessed with wanting to make spreadsheets about how much weight I've lost. <laughs> you know, like, you know, the little spreadsheets you make, but then you start getting crazy. You're like, okay, if I continue at this rate, because you never continue at this rate, right? You're like, then it'll take this long. And, this, this. and like, I love those little math calculations and stuff. So like, I get really into it, but then it's really fantasy. It's not really real. So I need to watch my expectations around that. Like if I just want to make a pretty chart, fine, but I shouldn't believe it. But yeah, about just over a month in now, about five pounds down, super happy with that. My expectation for the next month or two is it might be more like three-ish pounds a month. And that's totally appropriate and fine because obviously, like I said, a little bit of water weight at the beginning, even if it's two and a half, we really totally happy with that. I'm going to keep my head on straight as my plan, obviously. Right now, what has my diet been looking like? Well, I've still been eating like three meals a day because that seems to work best for me. I do have a somewhat compressed eating window, not for a specifically I want to get more fasting in reason, but just like how my life works. Some things that I have found is that is are some things that I have found are I just about myself. And this is partially influenced by my boyfriend who also likes to eat. We're old now, apparently we like to eat dinner early. And I find I sleep better if I eat earlier. And it is also getting dark earlier, which makes the evening seem just crazy long. Last night, I think we were we watched put a movie on while we were eating dinner. And then we kept watching it. We it doesn't take the whole movie to eat dinner. But you know, we so we put it on at like, 5 45 and um we were watching and then it ended and i was like oh it's bedtime and i was like it's eight o'clock oh my god 
like, I, I don't know if I can stay up for another few. Anyway, but um, this winter sundown thing really screws my head. Anyway, so we have been eating dinner somewhere. Be- we try to eat dinner before 6.30, usually not before 5.45, 6 o'clock, so somewhere in that time frame. And then I don't snack. So after dinner, sometimes I'll have a creamy, like right at the end of dinner, you know, like wash the dishes, put stuff away, start the creamy machine, right? So not like, it's not like I have to run to get it done, but I just in that same kind of window period. I was having them at the beginning when I entered into this cut, this fat loss phase, but we kind of got out of the habit. It got really cold. And so we were both kind of like, I don't really necessarily feel like a creamy. For those that are uninitiated, a creamy is like a frozen yogurt, the way that we make it anyway, in the creamy machine, the Ninja creamy machine, which is the best thing ever. But I haven't been that into it as it's gotten colder. So I haven't been having that as much. And I haven't really missed it. So, so far, so good. So anyway, um, we end up stopping our kind of eating by, certainly by seven, you know, maybe a rare evening where things get pushed a little later, but pretty much by seven, dinner's done, we're done eating. uh, And then I don't eat again until the next day. So get up in the morning putter around for a bit, do a couple things. I'm not usually super hungry when I first wake up. And so I don't rush to eat until that feels like something I want to do. But if I wake up hungry, which happens sometimes, then I'll eat when I wake up. So I usually end up eating my first meal around 1030 or so. So I've never actually calculated, I haven't really calculated what kind of an eating window is that. So let's see. 10 to 7, that's a nine hour eating window. So usually I'm actually eating probably within a eight hour window, but you can see I'm not super religious about it. And some people will ask, is it because intermittent fasting is important to you? And it's like, no, I just kind of listen to my hunger cues. I'm not super hungry when I first wake up. I get hungry around 10. I eat breakfast somewhere in the 10 to 11 o'clock time frame. Then midday, I have what I kind of I'm looking at as a very light meal. That's where I probably cut the most in terms of calories from when I was eating at more maintenance, because I mean, it's pretty compressed, you know, so I'm still I'm not, I've not gone a lot of hours after breakfast. So I'm having maybe a light meal. Most people would actually call it a snack, but I don't call it a snack because it's a meal because I'm eating and I don't really snack. But it's a light one. It's a small meal midday, I don't know, maybe around 2.30, and then have dinner at some time between 5.45 and 6.30. So that's that's kind of how I spread out my meals. It's very habit and hunger-based. I am not a stickler about fasting. Uh, I'm not a stickler about intermittent fasting. I'm currently in a caloric deficit for sure as the scale is going down and you know, there's a lot of good reasons and good things about fasting. I think some digestive rest overnight, right? I sleep better when I've let my food digest completely. So that's one of the reasons I don't like to eat too close to bedtime. That way I avoid any issues that I might have. And I just in terms of like any acid reflux or anything like I don't really have a problem with it. But if I ever do, it's often because I've eaten pretty close to when I sleep. I think I'm a pretty slow food digester. Like I've always been that way. So, you know, like if I would eat before I would work out a lot of times, I would feel really sick. So I'm not somebody clear. I don't think I digest food very fast. Then the other part of it is a couple of times in my life, I've noticed like I've eaten a fairly big meal, maybe not like right up close to bedtime, but a little too close to bedtime compared to what, what I like to do. And I just sleep like crap. I can tell my body is still burning the the fuel I'm I've eaten. It's trying to digest it. I feel kind of warm. I don't feel sleep is not as good in terms of quality. So I don't like to go to bed hungry, but I certainly don't like to go to bed really full at all. So what kinds of foods have I been choosing on this fat loss phase? Well, some popular items have been my, I, I think I've said some of these before, but I'm trying to think of the questions people will ask ahead of time. Uh, my pumpkin cranberry cake has been a lifesaver to have on hand. It's basically my breakfast with a cup of coffee with some um, fair life milk, the fair life whole milk. Sometimes I make like a cappuccino. 
I have an espresso frother that I got years ago that I love. And so I froth milk in that. And then I do my little pods, have a little cappuccino and a piece of the pumpkin cranberry cake. It's, I make with a, a good deal of protein powder, a, a fair number of eggs and some yogurt. So it's, it's a pretty high protein little cake. And I'm very fond of it. The recipe is on my website, kimhowerton.com. And other times for breakfast, I might have some eggs, but usually it's something like that cake or I've started making, I don't know what to call it, but um, you might call it a baked pumpkin yogurt. It needs a good name. I don't have one, but it's basically, I blend together yogurt, pumpkin, like canned pumpkin, eggs, yeah, it's basically yogurt, canned pumpkin, eggs, and a little bit of protein powder. And I use a pumpkin flavored protein powder. So it has sort of a pumpkin flavor. Um, and it's sort of, uh, the texture is like a little bit firmer than flan. Like flan is more loosey goosey, but it's not, the yogurt doesn't make it like pie. But if you over bake it, which sometimes I accidentally do, it's a little more solid than I like it. So kind of want to err on the side of, under baking it because I like it a little more custardy. I guess it's a custard. It's a type of custard, right? You bake eggs and dairy, it's a custard. I haven't written this recipe up, but it's basically like, I don't know, about a hundred. I'm thinking about increasing the pumpkin, but so far I've been doing like two containers, which is 10 ounces of yogurt. I, I had some of the two good pumpkin flavored yogurt, but if you can't find that, you could just use plain faye yogurt. So about two of those little containers are each five ounces, right? I think. Yeah. So about 10 ounces of that. And then six eggs and a scoop of pumpkin protein powder, which is around 30, 31 grams, some vanilla, a tablespoon of sweetener, like a allulose. If you like it sweet, I like things sweet, moderately sweet and some pumpkin pie spice. Yeah. So let me say that again more quickly. I was trying to remember what's in it. So about 100 grams of pumpkin puree, but I think I might double that. So do as you will with that information. Two containers, individual containers of yogurt. If you can't find the too good pumpkin flavor or something similar, or you could use a vanilla, then you can use plain. That's fine. So that's around 10 ounces. Then six eggs, some sweetener if you want it, and about 31 grams of a protein powder powder pumpkin flavored is best if you can find it. If you can't, then a vanilla would be fine and some pumpkin pie spice. And then I bake it. I line a eight by eight square pan. I like little squares of it. You could do it in a pie pan if you wanted to. And then I bake that at 325 until it's set, but not firm, which is around a half an hour. But I would set your oven for like 25 minutes and then keep an eye on it depending on how firm you want it. So I've been having that and that's really high protein. It's basically yogurt, eggs, and protein powders. And so it's a great breakfast for me. I have on my website, a clafoodi recipe, which is pretty similar, actually, not pumpkin flavor. It's like a baked custardy yogurt thing with some fruit in it. So very similar. So you can look that up if you want. Then for lunch snack, I've been just having maybe some leftover meat, like some chicken and maybe a few vegetables or a little bit of soup that I'll make. I've been making a little, made some chicken soup the other night. It was good. So it's like some meat and some, maybe sometimes I have a piece of fruit and a yogurt because I'm not fully ketogenic right now. I'm just, I'm doing low carb. The reason I choose to do that is I don't, personally at this point get as much satiation as I, as I used to from a high fat diet. So I lowered the fat a little bit and I added a little bit more food volume in terms of vegetables and a little bit of fruit. So I might have some berries and yogurt, or I might have some leftover meat and a little like a pickle, you know, just a little small amount of, of just a small meal. And then, but it's lunch is not as really recipe based. I'll say it that way. Or maybe like an egg life wrap with a little bit of chicken salad or something in it. And then I'll usually actually have a coffee again in the afternoon, a little pick me up, sometimes a decaf, sometimes not. And so a little more milk will go in that. So that'll be kind of in that lunch period. And then for dinner, 
I've been doing a lot of cauliflower rice with stir fry. I made a lasagna. I made a version of like a spinach pie that I got inspired by from Sugar Free Mom. So if you look for Sugar Free Mom, I think it's just spinach pie. You should find a recipe and I based it on that. It's pretty similar. I always have to tinker, right? So I didn't add the cream. She has a dose of cream in there and I omitted it. And I think I put in a little bit more cheese and a little bit more spinach, more veg. Again, because if you're trying to be keto, you might not want to put a ton of spinach, but I don't seem to have a problem with it. So I put more in. And so that would be dinner would be something like a casserole thing like that spinach pie or a stir fry with cauliflower rice. I made a lasagna the other day. And so those have been the kinds of things that I've been hitting for dinner and it's been good. So I've been feeling mentally on point, no real struggles. You know, I hesitate to tell you exactly like how many calories I'm eating and this and that, because our bodies are all so different. And I don't think that specifically would be super helpful for you guys. I can tell you that from my maintenance calories, I'm currently in about a 400 calorie deficit. And so if you're trying to be in a cut, the way that I always do it is learn your maintenance calories. So at what caloric intake do you maintain your weight? Obviously, you got to get enough protein in you got to hit your minimum protein of, in my opinion, somewhere around 0.8 grams per pound of your reference or goal body weight. So I definitely try and hit that. And then the rest I fill in with whole food type foods that make up the rest of my macros. Some days a little more carbs, some days a little more fat, just depends on the kinds of foods I'm eating. And so I figure out what my maintenance calories would be. And then I figure out how much I want to cut from that to set sort of a an appropriate rate of loss for my life. And so some people's maintenance calories are 2000 and some people's maintenance calories are 1500. And so that's going to be very different because the first person, they will lose weight on the second person's maintenance calories, right? We can't compare. And those people might be the same height, about the same weight. You can't really compare. You have to know where you fall. And so that's what I, the work that I do, that's the work I do with my clients to figure that out. And so, you know, I don't necessarily think my calories are going to be helpful for you so much as me keep explaining how I figure that part out. And right now, I I mentioned this before, I'm using an app, I'm using Macro Factor. I'm an affiliate. If you want to join, you can. I would appreciate it. They give me a little bit of change, which is very helpful. No extra cost to you. If you don't want to use it, the next one I recommend is Chronometer. So if you want to track, but the reason I like Macro Factor is it helps you fit you You put in good data to it. You put in exactly what you're eating every day and it helps you figure out what your appropriate rate of loss and maintenance calories are. I mean, it doesn't tell you your rate of loss. You tell it what you would like that to be. But based on all the data you've put in, it helps you to calculate, you know, what that's going to take, what macros you would need to go to. And so that's helpful, I think, for a lot of people. And I'm using it. I got a lot of feedback from people that they would like me to do a little class on macro factors. So I am planning that as we enter into the new year, I'll uh, put some things up on socials and let you guys know so that when that comes around, we'll be ready for it. All right, guys, that's my update. I hope that was helpful for you. I'm just trying to stay connected and uh, give you a slice of life here. And I will talk to you soon. Have a good Christmas. If you listen to this the week before Christmas, Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Keto Life Support. Want more information? Want show notes? Want to suggest a topic? Just head over to ketolifesupport.com. That's where all that kind of thing can go on. By the way, I have a request. If you could go to your podcast host and hit subscribe, we would really, really appreciate it. And what would be even more awesome is if you could write a review. And what would be even more awesome than that is if you could write like a really flattering review. Just asking, you know, you do you. All right. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm thrilled that you're part of the Keto fam. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.